So, in the previous lecture, we had introduced metric spaces and the last result we had proved was the following lemma. So, we introduced metric spaces and we saw how given a metric space, we can put a topology on it and, uh, and we proved the following lemma. prove that uh, if A is a subset of X which is a metric space right. So, then X uh, belongs to A closure if and only if there is a sequence X ends in A with X ends converging to X. So, using this lemma, we will give a convenient criterion for a subset in a metric space to be closed. So, uh, let x be a metric space. And let a contain x be a subset. Then a is closed. if and only if uh, it has the following property. So, if x ends is a sequence in A and x ends converts to x, then x is also in A. Okay. So, uh, okay. so, let us prove this lemma. So, prove. Uh, recall we had proved that A is closed in a topological space if and only if A is equal to A closure. Right? So, we will use this criterion. Yeah? So, first let us assume that. So, it is enough to show that A is equal to A closure if and only if X n belongs to A and X n converges to X, then X belongs to A. So, uh, first assume that A is equal to A closure. Right. So, then we have to show that uh, the set A, it has this property. So, let us see this. So, if X n's are in A and X n converges to X, then by the lemma we proved in the previous lecture, uh, X belongs to A closure. Right. And we are assuming that A is equal to A closure. So, this implies that X belongs to A. Thus, x has this property. Okay. So, conversely, suppose x has, suppose a has this property, suppose a has this property, this prop has the property that Uh, every time we have x n in A and x n converts to x, then x is in A. Right. So, we assume that A has this property and we want to show that uh, A is equal to A closure. So, let x be an element of A closure. It is obvious that A is contained in A closure. So, we just have to prove the converse. So, we take an element x in A closure. So, by this lemma, by the lemma, by this lemma that we proved in the previous class, uh, there is a sequence x ends in A such that x ends converts to x. Right? So, by this property that A has, every time we have such a sequence, then x belongs to A. Right, because of this property. So, we have a sequence x n in A and x n converges to x. So, we have x belongs to A. Yeah, so, this implies that. So, this implies that x belongs to A. 
thus a is equal to closed loop right so thus a is closed so to check that a subset is closed we just need to check that every time a sequence of points in that subset a x ends x ends converge to x then we just have to check that a, this point x is in uh, is in a to check the continuity of a map between metric spaces so that is this theorem so let x and y be metric spaces and let f from x to y be a map of sets okay so then f is continuous if and only if for every sequence x ends converging to x we have f of x n converge to f of x so this sequence is in x and this sequence is in y right so this gives us a way to check continuity of maps between metric spaces right so let us prove this so let us assume that we first assume that x f is continuous right so uh, for every and let x n converge into x be a sequence right uh, for epsilon positive consider the subset the open subset the epsilon ball around f of x okay so right so here we have x and this is f here we have y and here we have this f of x so we just take this open ball around f of x of radius epsilon and we look at its in inverse image right uh, so since f is continuous so its inverse image may be some open subset like this it implies that f inverse of this open ball is open in x right and moreover since x is in this open subset right so x is somewhere over here and this is an open subset which contains x so therefore there is a small delta a ball of radius delta around x which is completely contained in this open subset so this implies that there is delta positive such that this ball of radius delta around x is completely contained inside f inverse of this f okay so as x ends converge to x by the definition of convergence right there exists n such that for all n greater than equal to n these x ends are in this ball so we have this sequence of x ends which converge to x so after finitely many all these x ends are going to be in this open ball b delta are going to be in this delta neighborhood of x right so this implies that uh, which is contained in this subset right so this implies that for all n greater than or equal to n f of x n belongs to p epsilon f of x right and by the definition so by definition by definition of convergence this implies that f of x n 
converges to f of x. So, this proves one part of the lemma. Okay. So, now let us prove the converse. Uh, so, to prove the converse, it suffices to show that So, to prove the converse means we are given that f satisfies a particular property, it takes convergent sequences to convergent sequences and we have to show that f is continuous. So, to show that f is continuous, it suffices to show that the inverse image of a closed subset is closed when z contained in y is closed. Right. And uh, to show that this is closed, we will use uh, this lemma that we just proved, right? Uh, or okay, not this lemma. So we will. So let's see. So to show that. F inverse Z is closed. We will use. We will show that f inverse z is equal to its closure. Right. So let us pick. So let x be an element in f inverse z closure. Right. So this implies that uh, there is a sequence x ends converging to x where x ends is in f inverse of z right uh, so x n is in f inverse of z implies that f of x n uh, is in z right so moreover since f takes convergent sequences to convergent sequences, that is the property that f has. If x n converges to x, then f of x n converges to f of x, right. So, uh, as x n converges to x, this implies f of x n converges to f of x, right. Now, z, so as z is closed, This implies that f of x belongs to z. Z is closed, f of x n is in z, and f of x n converges to x. This implies that f of x belongs to z, right. So, uh, uh, thus x belongs to f inverse z, right. So, we started with the point x in f inverse z closure and we proved that x belongs to f inverse z. So, this implies that f inverse z is equal to f inverse z closure. Right? So, this implies that f inverse z is closed, which implies that f is continuous. Okay. Okay. So, that kind of brings us to an end of the second part of this course. So, in the first part, we introduce some the notion of a topological space and basic examples. In the second part, we introduce continuous maps between topological spaces and we studied their properties. In the second part, we also saw a large, we also defined uh, metric spaces, which gives us a large collection of topological spaces and large and most important collection of topological spaces. But now we will, so now we are coming to the third part of this course. So in the third, in this part we will introduce uh, topological properties of topological spaces, right. So uh, the first property we are going to introduce is that of connectedness, uh, right. So we, uh, okay, so re recall that two spaces, two topological spaces. are called homeomorphic
if there is a bijective continuous map f from x to y such that f inverse is also continuous. So, uh, two topological spaces are the same. So, the word same is in quotes, right? Same as in as far as continuous maps are concerned, uh, they cannot be differentiated if, if they are homeomorphic. So, it is natural to ask, it is natural to try and classify uh, topological spaces up to homeomorphism. For instance, we can take the interval 0 1 and we can take the disjoint interval 0 1, I mean the this topological space which is the disjoint union of two intervals right and we can ask are these homeomorphic. Right. So, uh, if we can find some topological property which 0 1 has and this disjoint union of two intervals does not have, then it would mean that these two cannot be homeomorphic, right. So, uh, we will try, we will introduce this notion of connectedness now, which will help us distinguish between two topological spaces, okay. Uh, so, in this lecture, we shall introduce the notion of connectedness. Okay. Okay, so definition uh, let x be a topological space. Suppose there are non empty open subsets U and V. So, they are non empty both of them, that is important, such that U in so U intersection V is empty, they are disjoint. and x is the union of both these, right. So, then we say that x is disconnected. Okay. Otherwise, if x is not disconnected, then we say x is connected. So, immediately, so we have this property, we have defined this property of topological spaces. So, we can ask the following questions. What? So, we can ask is R connected? So, R is with the standard topology. What about Rn? 
again with the standard topology. Uh, what are the connected subspaces? of R. Is there a nice way to describe these right or for that matter of R n right. So, 3 uh, if x and y are connected can we say something. So, one of the topological spaces we constructed out of x and y is the product. about the connectedness of x cross y. Then we saw various examples right connectedness of g l and r, s l and r, o n, s o n, g l and c, s l and c and so on, u n, what can we say about the connectedness of these objects right. So, in order to answer these questions we will need to develop some uh, results and tools which we can use yeah. So, ok. So, let us begin that. So, the first proposition we are going to prove is let u contained in x be dense right. So, if u is connected then x is connected ok. So, let us prove this. So, let us assume that x is disconnected and arrive at a contradiction. as x is disconnected there are non empty open sets u 1 and u 2 such that which are disjoint such that we can write x as a disjoint union x is a disjoint union of u 1 and u 2 right. So, now we simply intersect both sides with u. So, intersect both with u to get u is equal to 2 intersection u 1 disjoint union u intersection u 2. So, as u is dense in x, so as u is dense in x, this implies that u intersection u 1 is non empty and u intersection u 2 is non empty, right. But this, but this shows that u is disconnected which is a contradiction right. So, this implies that uh, our hypothesis is wrong. So, that means x is connected ok. So, as a corollary we have let a contain in x be a subspace if a is connected uh, then 
the closure is connected. Right, proof. We call that. So, when we talk about A and A closure, all these are subsets of X and we are always giving it the giving these the subspace topology. So, recall that we have proved that A is dense in A closure. Yeah, so applying the previous proposition. implies that A closure is connected. Okay. So, uh, we will end this lecture here.